Hey everybody, this is Gordon Overkill and what I am going to record tonight is not an episode of Godizzle's Fabulous Adventures, but uh, because some people asked me to do something like that, I want to record a little uh, how to play Adam video where I will uh, explain in detail which buttons you have to push in order to reach the basic functions and uh, what the, the, all the stats and skills and talents mean. And uh, therefore, we're going to uh, generate a test character. It's a unicorn-born character. And we let fate decide what kind of character it is. Random. A male high elf thief. Very nice. That fits. Uh, Stats get modified randomly. And uh, from now on, we start with the first thing to do, which is choose talents. You get a talent every couple of levels and one or more at the beginning of the game. And you choose the talents by uh, pressing the letters that are standing left of the talents. A short description can be seen on the right side. And there are some future talents that uh, have other required talents that you need to know in order to choose them. But th that's a little, b little deeper information that you don't need to begin the game. Well, we have one talent, and for our character, or if you're not sure what to take, it's never a bad idea to choose quick. Quick makes you, s uh, makes you uh, faster, and being fast is always a good thing in Adam. So we take quick. I cannot remember if we were male or female, but I think it was a male thief, so we name him Greedy Gat. Greedy Gat. That's our character. Let's check if he was really male and you can check. Well, we'll do it later. At first I'll uh, explain to you what you see here. This little add sign on the top right bottom is uh, Greedy Gert, our character. Uh, around you can see uh, those uh, um, black arrows, which are hills. Those white arrows are mountains. Those dots are a road on which he's walking. Um, um, at the bottom of the, sc the screen, you can see his uh, stats at first, which are strength. Strength is uh, important for carrying capacity and for the damage you deal. Uh, learning, which is important to uh, um, uh, skill increases and also to uh, learn spells. Willpower enables you to um, withstand uh, mental attacks. And it also, at high values, um, increases the length of your spells. Dexterity is good for dodging and missile combat. Toughness, uh, main function is uh, it increases your hit points and uh, also your protection value. Charisma, uh, as far as I know, the only thing that it does uh, is it increases the shop prices for male characters, which is not very important. And appearance, on the other hand, other hand, it increases the shop prices for female characters. So these both talents are more or less totally useless. You must not care about them, or you need at least. Magic increases uh, your power points that you use to cast spells. Perception increases your um, your. Um, well, uh, you can uh, with a high per uh, perception, you can look farther and uh, hear uh, noises from, uh, from from greater distances. The little sign in the bottom right, th this L means that our character has lawful alignment. He could also be uh, neutral or chaotic or some mixtures in between, but our character starts as lawful. Uh, the second line of the bottom um, of the screen, you see the DVPV value which means uh, defense value and protection value. Defense value means how well the character is able to dodge enemy attacks. And protection value means if he's hit uh, by how much points the damage is reduced. In the early game, I can already tell you, protection value is very, very important. If you have high protection value, your survivability will be much, much higher. Um, H means hit points. There you see the maximum number of hit points and uh, the um, current number of hit points. If you get hit, the current number will decrease and you will regenerate them afterwards, either if you wait or if you drink healing potions or something like that. The next uh, thing you see is the power points, which are uh, the kind of energy you use to cast spells. 
our character is not a spellcaster, so you will not see um, him use his power points very likely. But that's not so important. Maybe I will make another tutorial for spellcasters at another time. Here you see the uh, experience, uh, which is also two values. The first is the current level of the character, and the second is uh, the number of experience points. Um, this is uh, um, a short description of the map that you're currently seeing. And DRCH means Drakalor Chain, which is uh, the main overland map of, the, of, of Adom. And finally, in the bottom right, you can uh, see different things. At the moment, you see the speed value of 104 points. If you press double point and T, you change this dynam dynamic display and you can get uh, several other uh, functions here. For example, now uh, you see the number of energy co uh, points that the last action of the character costed. At the moment, it's zero because it didn't do any actions so far. If you press it another time, you see the number of gold or of credits that the character is carrying, 43 in this case. Another time, the number of ammunition the character has for his current uh, missile weapon, zero. He has not any missile weapons uh, uh, equipped. And this is uh, the number of game turns that have, uh, have passed since you started your adventure. Um, well, I uh, usually move it to the to the game turns so I see how long I've already played in uh, in game time. Well that's what you see on the starting screen. Now you do not want to stand at the very right where you where you came from. This is the entrance to the Dracula chain. If I would now press uh, the button to the right, just by the way you move with a with a number pad and uh, you have to know that uh, the central number, number five, means that you wait one round on the square where you are standing which can be quite helpful in certain situations. Well, if I would now try to move to the right, um, I get asked if I want to leave the Dracula chain because yes, the exit of the chain. Of course, I will not do so because otherwise the adventure would have ended before it really began. Well, now that we walk around this uh, pleasant road, uh, you see me walking around using the number pad here to the to the to the left of us there is a tiny hamlet which one could visit which is also important for the main plot but what I didn't tell you yet uh, Greedy Gert has a different plan than following the um, standard uh, Adon plot what he wants to do is he wants to dive into the infinite dungeon which is a randomly generated dungeon with more or less infinite number of levels and his aim is to reach level 10 of the infinite dungeon uh, pillage all the levels, get all the loot he can get, sell it at the black market, a certain place that you will see afterwards, and leave the chain again with as much money as possible. I think that's enough to show some m important features of the game and functions to you, without spoiling you in regards to the main plot. Well, so he will not enter the tiny hamlet and accept, move to the south, so the only thing you will be spoiled is you will know where the where the infinite dungeon is, which you would find very quickly anyway. So here we are, a tiny strangely distorted cave entry. The light of the moon and the stars slowly seem to dissolve in the clouds. Well, happy birthday. Oh, <laughs> Greedy Gert has uh, celebrated his birthday today. That's great. Anyway, um, what we're going to do is to enter this dungeon. You do this by uh, pressing shift and the key with, uh, um, with, a, with an arrow to the right. Looks like that. Rip, rip. So, here we are. Uh, we entered uh, the cavern with the combination that I told you. If I press the same key without shift, which is more or less this sign, I could uh, walk up the stairs and uh, leave the dungeon again. That's not what we're going to do right now. Anyway, at, uh, if you enter a new dungeon level, you always get a, a specific message. In this time, uh, in this. Uh, now, after entering the dungeons, it tells us uh, the caverns almost seem to be endless, which is a standard message that uh, tells you that you entered the infinite dungeon, which is indeed practically endless. It is very um, clever to read these messages because they can sometimes give you a hint of what to expect on the level where you just are. 
Anyway, we will see how good we are prepared for our adventure. So the first thing we want to check is if we are really male like we remembered it. Therefore we press Shift and the B button to get some uh, character information. Or you could say we press capital B. Greedy Gert is a male high elf. Very nice. A thief, blue eyes, silver hair, pale complexion, so tall, so heavy, age of 209. Age uh, is an important factor in the game because there are enemies who can age you unnaturally and if you're not very lucky, even especially if you're wearing a short-lived race, uh, this can kill you. You don't want that, of course. The star sign is also important. There are different star signs, but you have no uh, chance to uh, choose one. You, it, it gets randomly rolled when you generate the character, so we do not care about it very much. Also, you can reread the background story, but that's not so important at this point. What is much more important for the um, for the game is uh, the equipment of our character. That's why we press uh, the I key. Small I without shift or anything. There we get the equipment that the character is car currently wearing. At the top we can read the maximum carrying capacity is 1650 stones. And we are currently ca uh, carrying just 326 stones. That's not very much. We can carry a lot more, which is good, because we want to carry the loot out and sell it and get become a rich elf. Well, what we see is uh, um, we are currently wearing headgear, body armor, uh, a short sword in the right hand, gloves, light boots. Well, and after those pieces of armor, you always see in, um, in those, uh, not the round, brackets but the other ones um, two values plus zero plus zero and those values require um, they refer to the DV PV value so this leather cap brings plus zero to uh, defense value and plus zero pro to protection value it doesn't bring very much but anyway we started with it the leather armor on the other hand gives us plus zero to defense value but plus two to protection value which is actually very nice that's where we got our two PV points from for the weapons, there are round brackets, and they have a different meaning. The first one means that we've got means that we've got a plus zero modifier to the uh, to hit value, and the second one, one d six, is the damage that the weapon does. The gloves have both um, round and uh, not round. I don't know the word <laughs> brackets. Well, and the first brackets mean uh, that it gives a plus one modifier. Uh, to melee combat and to missile combat. So it's worth wearing these gunlets, although they have no uh, defensive modifiers. Those um, items that we are wearing on our body are not, the uh, are not all everything that we have, because we can uh, press the V button in order to view the stuff we've got in our backpack. So here we see we also have got a dagger in the backpack, a pair of thieves picks, an iron ration, which is important because hunger plays an important role in Adam. You have to keep your character satiated, otherwise he might starve to death. And we have got a starting amount of 43 gold pieces. Hopefully we will increase this over time. Well, the dagger can be used as a missile weapon, because um, using missile weapons is um, very effective in Adam, because it means you can attack uh, an enemy from distance while he cannot attack you, which is practically a free attack. So we press the N button, which is the one for the missiles, and equip with the A button the dagger. So now it is in our missile slot. Very nice. So much about our equipment for the moment. Another important thing that we want to know is how good we can fight with our weapons. Therefore, we press Ctrl plus V in order to watch our weapon, weapon skills. We can see that we've got a Swords level 2, which gives us plus 2 to hit. And that's more or less everything that we can do at the moment. All the other weapons are not trained. We can change that. You see on the right side the number of required marks um, in order to train this skill by uh, by uh, t by one more level. We've got swords too, so we might would need 40 more required uh, swords marks in order to increase it to level 3. While the other ones train a little faster. They are still level 0 and only 15 marks are required to, le uh, to reach level 1. 
what else can we see here? This uh, level is just a general description of how good you are. It increases every couple of points. I think every every 25 points or so the description changes. Or I don't know if it's 25 or whatever. No, definitely not. I think at uh, level 4 you get from basic to experienced and at level don't ask me what it it get, gets better and better but it's not important for the game there you see what you get by experience at the moment we've got this two uh, to hit modifier if we train uh, train it further we will also get modifiers to damage and to defense value if we use this kind of weapon for the missile weapons they have no uh, defense modifier but therefore they've got a range modifier which uh, so if we train for example, with a, f a thrown dagger a lot, we can throw it farther at one point. And for shields, if you wear a shield, you only get a bonus to defense value. But that's still uh, very helpful. Uh, that's our weapon skills. Another thing that we want to know is the rest of our skills, and we can watch them by pressing the A button. The A button shows us the skills that we already have. Alertness, appraising, backstabbing, climbing, detect traps, disarm traps, and so on. I do not want to go too much into detail. Most of them explain quite a lot for themselves. For example, alertness. If you're an alert guy, you're better at uh, evading traps or spells that are shot at you. Uh, backstabbing. If you are in stealth mode, and an enemy has not recognized you, you do more damage or something like that. That's not so important to go in detail here. What you have to know is you train them in two different ways. The first one is uh, if you reach a new level, you get a couple of skill increases. How many depends on your learning score. And um, as you can also see, uh, you have different values by which you can increase the spell if you level them up. For example, alertness, if we would increase alertness, we could uh, get, would get the bonus by 4d4, so 4 up to 16 points, something in between. And there's also a potential maximum, which increases b uh, over time, which uh, is, c is uh, I don't know how you call it, a heavy cap for what how much you can increase at a, at a certain moment. That's more or less everything you have to know here. With the different skills, hmm. Maybe I will, if we reach a new level, I will tell you something about which ones are important to, uh, to race in the beginning. What else do we need? Well, I think that's the most important stuff. If we had accepted a special quest at the moment, we could have pressed the, the Q button in order to watch this quest. But currently you have no, you're not involved in any quests. Q button is important if you do the, 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 the main plot line. And something else that we want to check. Well, um, if you press the add sign, wait, or uh, this keyboard is it's Alt plus uh, plus Q, then you get uh, this very practical overview over your stats and uh, some other things. You see the stats that we have already seen, and you also see the potential maximum to which you can increase the stats. At the version of the game that I play, you can also increase the potential maximum quite easily for some important stats, but that's a different story that we will not care about in this uh, starting guide. Also, you see this TMP row, which means the temporary uh, modifiers that you have. And uh, for example, if you wear an item that uh, increases the stat, that can be important, or if you are sick or something like that. Here you see the in-game time that has uh, that has passed since you started your adventures. For example, we are now at day one and uh, 24 minutes, eight seconds at the moment. See which deity you have, your gold, how much you have, how old you are. There you ca also can see if you are unnaturally aged, how by how many years, how much you carry, how much you can carry, and at which uh, range you will get burned, strained, and very strange. That happens if you carry more than you are usually able to carry, which on the one hand is good because it trains your strength up to a value of 18, but on the other hand it decreases your uh, fighting abilities and uh, you use more food if you are burdened, strained or very strained. Below you see the weapon you are using, missile weapon and uh, melee weapon. 
with the stats uh, all counted in. For example, now we've got the plus five to hit bonus, and which uh, two of those plus five points are from uh, from from our the training with a uh, with the sword skill that we saw. Number of ammunition and so on, and how much cake damage we would do. That's also quite important to know at the beginning of the game. Anyway. We are in this dungeon and why we just walk around, it could always happen that we run into a monster and we want to be prepared, we do not want this monster to harm us, so we might at next change our tactics uh, settings. S at the moment we are at normal settings, which means that uh, there are no modifiers, neither to, to hit, nor to damage, nor to defense, and you can change the tactic settings by using the buttons from F1 to F7. F1 is Berserker mode plus 6 to hit, plus 3 damage, but minus 10 defense value. F7 is coward mode, minus 7 to hit, minus 4 defense, but plus 11 uh, damage, but plus 11 defense value. And in between you've got very aggressive, aggressive, normal, defensive, very defensive, or coward. If we just walk around and uh, we do not know if we will be attacked, it is very clever to stay in coward modus. So, as you can see, we've got a much higher defense value. Normal mode is, is uh, 16, coward mode it is 27, which is already a big advantage. That might save you from being hit by a dangerous opponent. Well, we go to coward mode and walk a little around this room, and as you can see... Oh! What was that? We were in a room without doors or anything, seemed that the dungeon has already ended, and there just appeared a message. I clicked it away, but I want to see what happened, so I press... Uh, first double point, shift, double point and M. This means uh, you go to the message buffer and there you see the last message th that appeared. You have found a secret door. Very nice. That's what's just happened here. This little plus sign, the brown plus sign, is a door. We want to open this door in order to explore this level. So we click onto the door. I press, press the free button in order to go to the bottom right. Do you want to open this door? Yes, I want, so I press Y. You open the door. Very nice. Uh, afterwards, we directly get into a dead end, but uh, if you know the game, you know that those dead ends are almost never real dead ends. So we want to search if maybe there is another secret door. The last one we found uh, randomly, but this time we want to search uh, actively, so we press the S button. You check the surroundings. Nothing found. Check them again, 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 again. And oh, you found another secret door. Very nice. So we also open this door, and there you already see there is a stair leading downward here. We have found the downstairs to the second level of the infant dungeon. But since we are greedy and we want to get everything from every every level down to level ten, we uh, will at first explore the rest of the level. New door, open it. And on the other side of this door, you see this big brown B, which is... Oh, I, I didn't tell you how to look. If you press the L key and then the, uh, the movement cursors, you can take a specific look at uh, something around you. For example, here I see a section of floor. There I see solid rock. This is the tunnel in which we are going. And this brown uh, B is a large bed. It is hostile. It could also be uh, not care about us or something like that, but at the moment it's hostile, which means it would attack us. And it's not injured at the moment. By pressing M button now, you get additional information about this foe. For example, here you get uh, to know something about this bat. A loud twitter from above, a confusing fluttering uh, of uh, leathery wings. The large bat swoops down from the sky, gibbering and shrieking, blah blah blah, and so on. This is a uh, very uh, atmospheric description of the enemy. And below you get some um, information about your opponent. At the moment you, we just know that a uh, large bat has an average speed of 93. Th we will get more uh, information as soon as we have fought this enemy. That's what we're going to do now. In order to be able to harm it, we move to a rather aggressive tactic. Maybe aggressive. We reach this by pressing F3. And now we press into the direction of the enemy. Oh, well, we hit the large bat and slay. So I cannot tell you how we uh, learn something about this bat. We have to learn from the next enemy, which is this guy down there. We ta use the look command again and see this is a rat. 
about the thread we know nothing yet but now that we saw it moving we know that it is an average speed of 198 that's how it works if you see an enemy using a specific uh, skill of his then you get this information we saw it move now we know how fast it moves if we now throw our knife at it well we missed it. do we know anything else now Yes, it could uh, dodge our attack and we know now that it seems to have a defense value of about 15 points. We saw it dodging and were able to rate its defense value. We want this red to approach us. We do not go in his direction because then it would be able to attack us in the same turn. But we will wait for the red to, uh, to, to reach us. So we just press the 5 button and the red is in the infight. Now we're switching back to very aggressive tactics or aggressive should be enough and attack the red. It is dead. Very nice. That's how uh, melee combat works in Adam. We walk around and you see it's uh, very tedious to just walk around by clicking a thousand times in the same direction. Luckily there is a command that helps us. It's the walk command. If we press W for walk and then in the direction where we want to walk. For example, to the northeast. I press the 9 button and the character walks as far into this direction as he can until he reaches something that stops him, which could be a wall. But it could also be that he spots a hostile enemy. There are several th things that can happen that stop your, uh, your walk command. But if you do not uh, find anything, s um, anything interesting, you walk as long as uh, and, uh, until you're stopped. Here we are stopped, for example, not only by the wall in front of us, but also by a pair of light boots li laying on the ground. We want to take this pair of boots with us because it, maybe we want to wear them ourselves or we want to sell them at the shop, so we have to pick them up. The button you use to pick something up is comma. So I press the comma key, you pick up the light boots. And now if I press I for inventory again and V for view your stuff, you see that there is a pair of light boots in our inventory. At the moment we are wearing some light boots, but they don't give us any bonus. So we want to see if maybe these light boots that we found are better. We unequip the light boots we are wearing by pressing the L button. And press the L button again in order to uh, equip a new pair of boots. You see that there is no protection bonus to be seen from this item, which is because we have not identified it yet. So it might be that it is better, it might also be that it is not better or even worse. But we will try it. Just put them on and we can see oh, it's the same as our old pair of boots, also plus zero, plus zero. So if we pick it up, now uh, put it out again, both are identified and now they stack. You have a, a pair of two light boots here. And we um, put one of them on. None is better than the other. Again, we want to know if there is a secret door at this dead end. And in order not to click uh, S for uh, too many times because that's tedious, we press the walk command plus S, which means our character searches for a couple of, I think it's 20 rounds or something like that. And you see, he directly found the secret door. Let's try to open it. This door is locked. You don't have an appropriate key to unlock the door. Try it again, try it again, nothing changes. What does a hero do if he wants to get into a room and the room is locked? He kicks the door. So I press the K command for kick. He asks me in which dire direction I want to kick and I press the 6 button for the door directly to the right of me. You shatter the door with a mighty kick. By smashing it, you activate the trap protecting the door. Previously hidden runes on, uh, on the door suddenly explode. You partially evade the explosion. Your light boots are torn apart. Well, it's nice that we found an additional pair of light boots because so we have still something to wear on our feet. But that's a risk that you always take by kicking those doors. They might be trapped and the um, traps might do big damage. We were quite happy that we were able to evade the explosion. I can tell you why we were able, because if I press the A button, you see we've got the alertness skill, which allows us to uh, evade trap damage, for example. Well, our boots are destroyed, so we put on the other pair that we just found. Very nice. But there is nothing more to be found in this room, so let's get back and check the other corridor. Here is another corridor that we have not yet explored. Aha, uh -huh. who's that guy? A goblin. This goblin is our next enemy. 
did we oh yeah a dagger is uh, originally not a missile weapon so we uh, do not get asked automatically if we want to equip it in the missile slot we have to do it manually every time so that's what we just did but now we found an original throwing weapon which is unequip the dagger i will show you how it works here on the ground lies the throwing knife and if i pick it up we directly get asked do you want to add the throwing knife to your missile slot yes we want so we do not have to add it manually, but we just uh, get asked whenever we pick it up after using it. So, explore the rest of this level. Who's this guy? It's a jackal. Throw our new throwing knife at the jackal. We directly hit it and we kill it. Very nice. Pick up and equip it again. This guy is not hostile. As you can see, uh, when you aim your missile weapon at it, I did not ex tell you how to use missile weapons, <laughs> sorry. Uh, in order to use the missile weapon, you press the T key, T for target. And then you automatically aim at the closest uh, possible aim, which is this goblin in this, uh, in this case. But you can use the, the, the arrow keys in order to point at other, at other enemies. If the X or the the direction of your shot gets red, that means that you cannot uh, hit that far. You must increase your range in order, order to get that far. At the moment, with the knife, we can only three, uh, throw for three, uh, uh, three fields. Well, this guy, as we can see, is neutral, is not our enemy, so we do not want to attack it. If we attacked it anyway, we it would get hostile and uh, our alignment would change towards chaotic, because it's a chaotic act to attack neutral monsters. But now, as you can see, it is following us, which may means that maybe it has changed its plans. No, not anymore. Okay. Lucky guy, he will stay alive. Oh, this guy is definitely not uh, ho uh, not our friend. He shot an arrow at us and he wounded us. Well, we will repeat by throwing our throw knife at him. That enables us to kill him. And we will see if maybe uh, his arrow uh, stayed whole. Pick it up. Oh yeah, it did. We do not want to put it in our missile slot because we do not have a bow yet. Pick up the knife. Oh, and he had some nice equipment with us, with him, this cobalt. Eleven arrows, a box of flint and steel, a scroll named Mkmfst, and a cobalt corpse. We don't need this cobalt corpse. If you uh, play the game a little yourself, you will know why. But this scroll is important. It's an interesting thing. Let's check at first if we are able to read. Oh yes, we've got the literacy skills, so we are able to read. But what does mnugnvst mean? Nobody knows it. And the reason is we have not um, identified this kind of scroll yet. There are different ways to identify your items, and the most basic one is to just use them and see what happens. So that's what, we, what we're going to do. Press the A key in order to use the scroll. Select an item to identify. So this was a scroll of identification. We could now, if we had an unidentified I item, which we do not really have, well, maybe those arrows. Maybe it tells us what the arrows do. We use it on the arrows. Check that. Oh yeah, now we know these arrows have uh, plus zero to hit and do 1d6 damage. That's how identification works. And the nice thing is, now that we know how scrolls of identify work, the next time we find one, we will already be able to see this is a scroll of identify. Well, we also found a quarter staff. This is no weapon for uh, for us to use. We're not trained with uh, with staves, as you can see. So we will just keep it with us in order to sell it later. Well, explore the rest of the level. What was this message? Again, we press double point plus M in order to see what happened. Your backstabbing skill increased by plus 2 to 8. Your literacy skill increased by plus 1 to 43. That's another way how do you increase skills. It does not always uh, not only happen at uh, level ups, but also just by using those skills. Over time you get uh, automatic increases, which is very nice. Maybe the literacy increase happened because we just wrote th this uh, scroll of identifying. Who are these guys? This one is a giant frog, he's hostile. This one is a female goblin, who's also hostile. I think the goblin is a little more dangerous, so we throw our knife at him and kill him from a distance. 
may be that oh there is also an orc and he throws a crude knife at us well we have to kill those guys but we try to do it one by one aggressive mode attack the orc we miss him and finally be able to uh, turn him into a mangled heap we pick up the crude knife that he dropped and I think the frog no it attacks us and as you can see we are already down to 13 HP from 18 that we had originally which is uh, quite a lot of the little amount of HP that we have so we want to get our HP increased as quick as possible on the way kill this orc no we missed him so we have to kill him in melee and we just reached level 2 very nice now we can see what happens at a level up we get five increases for our skills which is actually quite a lot we must be a clever guy well we want to be able to uh, evade those traps more reliably so we will increase our alertness skill we see we have a maximum at 41 at the moment and uh, increase dice of 44 so we can get if we're lucky 13 points we will try to get it not quite as much but we got at least some points what else is uh, useful to uh, to increase the dodge skill because we do not want to get hit especially with our uh, low armor value that we've got at the moment we want to increase maybe our reading skill May no no you can see the reading skill can only increase by a maximum of five points which is not very much so maybe there are other skills that have uh, higher benefit for example detect traps that would be uh, very nice if we could uh, detect those traps before they uh, explode on us and also very handy at the early game is first aid because it increases uh, um, it, it helps us to treat uh, um, treat ourselves when we are wounded and the last one maybe one more on alertness because it's just a fucking great skill so that was our first level up and you can also see our hit points increased uh, before we had 18 hit points now we have a maximum of 21 which is already a, a whole lot better still we must be a little careful because we are at low hit points and we do not want greedy girl to die before we have uh, seen all the important features of the game anyway you already know now a lot of the important stuff uh, in the early game so let's just have some fun walk through this dungeon and see what happens when we need uh, something new that we did not uh, talk about yet for example this there is this uh, percent sign this brown percent sign on the ground which is a large bad corpse at the moment we're not yet hungry if we were hungry we could read it at the bottom line of the screen but we do not want to risk uh, getting hungry so we want to eat this corpse we could do this either by carrying it up and eating it then or you can eat it, eat it directly from the ground anyway you have to push the E button we will just pick it up at first using the comma sign as we already know and then we push the E button and see that we've got our iron ration that we have from the beginning but we've also got the large bat corpse with us now it is sensible to eat these corpses as quick as possible because otherwise after some time they would rot away an iron ration on the other hand would uh, you could uh, carry this till the end of the game if you wanted to but the, the corpses will rot over time so we eat this large bad corpse that takes some turrets but now we are a little more satiated we cannot see it on the screen but know that it happened so much about the first level of the infinite dungeon let's descend to the second one the caverns almost seem to be endless that's what we already know the only message we get at this level. So, let's walk around and see what we find down here. Greedy Gert directly found the next downstairs, which is very nice. And here he has got Goblin Slave Master, which he kills by using his throwing knife, like he does so much at the moment. If we take a look at our weapon skills, we can see that our thrown dagger skill is still at level 0, but we do not need 7 marks anymore, but just 3 more marks in order to increase it. Also, the sword skill just needs 31 marks and not 40 as it did in the beginning. So, let's continue questing. Here we've got a neutral lizardman, but since he's neutral, we will not fight him. 
and we found some sling bullets. If we will find a sling at one point in the future, we can use those sling bullets. The lizard man turned hostile, so we'll throw the knife at it, and it works. And great, congratulations, we advanced to level 3. That's great. We spent another of our skill increases on alertness. Mm, detect traps. Dodge. Um, one more on first aid also. And maybe, maybe we just put one more on lit literacy. It increases our chance to successfully read those scrolls. scrolls. Otherwise, we could also mess it up. And since we have now reached level 3, we will get our first additional talent. Remember, at the first level, we uh, got the quick talent. We could now increase this, uh, this advantage by choosing very quick, which would give us another 3 points of speed. Or we could choose a different talent. For example, the one that I always find very nice is uh, the Hardy Talent, which gives us some additional hit points, which could easily de make the decision between life and death. So that's what we're going to do. Put up the throwing knife again, and continue exploring. Ooh, this guy's a bugbear, and they can be quite nasty for a young character like ours. Let's hope that we hit him with a knife. Nope, we miss him. This is a problem, but we want to, if possible, use more missile weapons against them. I know that crude knives do a little more damage than ordinary daggers, so we equip this one in the missile slot, although we have not checked it yet. Let's uh, first see how we do in the infight against them. Let's maybe choose aggressive tactics again and see what happens. Whoa, that was a nice hit. <laughs> Very cool. This guy is a white worm. If we would not have killed him, we might have found something out about him. But he did not live long enough. So you have to check for yourselves. As you can see, our throne dagger skill increased to level 1. That's really nice. We equip our throne dagger again and check what that does for us. Now we have throne daggers at level 1, which gives us plus 2 to hit and plus 1 point to damage and it requires now 12 more uh, training marks in order to get it to the next level. The higher you get, the more training marks you need for the next level. Here is a large ration, which is very nice, because we do not want to get problems with uh, lack of food, which can be a big problem in the early game. This door is stuck. Stuck doors are not like closed doors, that you have to kick them in any way, but uh, you can also try a little more and uh, eventually it will open. That's no problem if you've got the time. It can be uh, really annoying if you are, for example, chased by a dangerous opponent. We will kill this rat in the infight. This is a black hearthing. We will get a throw, no uh, throw knife from us. What I do now, which is uh, maybe a little trick, I equip the crude knife in the missile slot and to the the, the throwing knife, which is a genuine uh, missile weapon uh, as the backup weapon, because this way, if we throw the one knife, we will get asked if we want to uh, equip the other weapon of the same kind, but genuine weapon, so we do not have to, uh, to increase the other one manually. Which saves uh, practically one turn. We found a melon, which is also nice to eat. We will not get food problems in the close future, I think. So, now we already know most of the things we need in order to survive in uh, the early game. This guy threw a rock at us. I'm glad we were able to dodge it, were we? I don't know. At least uh, we were able to kill him with our own uh, missile weapons. And we reached level 4. <coughs> Alertness is so good that I will increase it, although we have just 5 points to increase. Plus 50 is already quite a nice skill in it, at alertness. Um, what else do we want? We have so many increases that uh, <laughs> there are even not so many sensible talents for us to choose. Anyway, one more on detect traps. One more on dodge, though there are not too many points. One more on literacy. 
which we have now at 50, which is already quite nice for this kind of character. And maybe we could also increase our climbing skill. If we fall into a hall, into a hole, we will be glad. A rock is also a genuine throwing weapon, but we have not trained it yet. So with a rock we do not get any bonuses. This guy is not our enemy. We do not want to make him. Oh, but now, but now he attacked us. And there are also those light furs on the ground, and these light furs, well, I do not think that they are better than our leather armor, so we do not have to try them. Anyway, I thought that uh, maybe uh, level 10 was uh, a little uh, optimistic uh, aim for this character that would take two 